couple of years ago, my friend Ellie did a video that was 25 bookish facts about her. I watched this video, I thought it was really good, and I decided I'd do my own. And then, I wrote them all down on a post-it note on my computer, and forgot about it. So yeah. Anyway, while looking through every other note on that computer, most of which are very out of date, I found this list of 25 facts about me. 25 bookish facts about me. So yeah, here we go. I learned to read out of the Argos catalogue. It's where I learned the word vary, and according to my mother, I would end virtually every sentence with colours may vary and only one supplied. The first book I ever read was Hop on Pop by Dr. Zeus. Not very original, but unoriginality is my whole thing. For my graphic design project in A-Level, I tried to make a point-of-sale display and series of book covers for H.P. Lovecraft stories. I failed, sadly, and I cried a lot. So glad I don't do graphic design anymore. Instead of graphic design, I now study Japanese, so as a result, I've got about six different books on learning kanji, BKB, BKB2, Kanji Look and Learn, Kanji Look and Learn's workbook, It Let's Learn Kanji, Kanji Pictographics, and I'm probably going to try and find Intermediate Kanji Book 1 and Intermediate Kanji Book 2 just because. While we're talking about books I need for my course, the other thing I study is English teaching. And I got a load of really interesting English textbooks and workbooks and exercise books from, from the recycling bin at the back of my dormitory while I was living in Japan. I once rooted through rubbish bins for books. Unlike most of my generation, I never read Harry Potter when I was a kid. I read the first three in my first year of uni. I thought the third one was the best out of them. And then the fourth one was just so big, I got too intimidated and didn't read it. That's actually one of the biggest problems I've got with books. I used to read a lot as a kid, but now when I see books that have got a lot of words or small print, I get really nervous and I feel like I'm expected to learn or feel something from reading it, which I don't do. Most of the time I tend to finish reading a book and be like, yes, that is a book. I don't have this problem with audiobooks because obviously they're audiobooks and don't have text. I've listened to a large chunk of the Star Wars Expanded Universe, I've listened to The Picture of Dorian Gray, I've listened to a ton of Sherlock Holmes stories, and I've even listened to some of the Pathfinder novels. Also, I can listen to them when I'm like washing up or going shopping or doing anything that requires my eyes. By a similar token, I'm much better at reading and analysing comic books, mostly because I want to spike the people who think that anything with superpowers and lots of pictures isn't real literature. Seriously, get over yourself. Go read Spider-Man. My current book collection is currently a 50-50 split between digital and dead tree format. When I told my mother this, she was like, oh, I'll get you a Kindle for your birthday, which was lovely. I was studying in Japan at this point, so they tried to mail it to me, and then they found out that you can't send lithium batteries through the post. So I ended up having to read all these books on, like, a tiny phone screen. <laughs> Probably have, like, all sorts of eye injuries because of that. Speaking of my mother, I once got her a book for Christmas. It was Caitlin Moran's autobiography, I believe. And she was really overwhelmed because she hadn't actually been given a book as a present in ages because she never finished them. So yeah, that was nice. On the note of Christmas, when me and my sister were children, Christmas was really frustrating for her. Because whenever I got a book, I would just start reading it and she got really anxious and twitchy that I wasn't unwrapping presents right then and there. One of my favourite authors when I was a kid was this dude called Jeremy Strong. I was once reading The Hundred Mile an Hour Dog in the middle of class and I was just lying on the desk laughing my head off and no one else knew why. It was super embarrassing. I once had a short story about clone babies printed out in a school magazine. It's not 100% book related, but I'm starting to run out of things to say at this point. I've only relatively recently started reading books properly again. When I wrote this down, I'd just finished reading Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto and John Dies at the End by uh, David Wong. I'd started reading Ready Player One before I came to Japan, and then I left the book in England 
and I'm not sure where I left it in England, because since I've come back, I can't find it. I love RPG source books, D&D, Pathfinder, Dark Heresy, etc, 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 because for one, they all look pretty and awesome, and are usually really well designed. But another thing, I love all the background info and all the fluff and how it all relates to some kind of overarching story you rarely get a full look at. Which is weird, because I normally don't like fantasy stuff and a lot of RPGs are fantasy. I'm bad at reading, I'm amazing at planning what to read. Like, I will uh, look up online what order certain books go in, or I'll try to arrange larger series of books by thematic elements or what they're based off. The reason for this is I read a Doctor Who novel called Head Games. And I didn't understand anything that was going on. And then I watched The Land of Fiction and read Conundrum and basically ruined both of them because I knew what happened because they talk about it all in head games. I've got uh, like four different reading lists that all follow on after each other now. Story time. A friend of mine once found a bulk load of Doctor Who Target novels on eBay. It had been a bundle for retail, so there were like four or five of each book. And he basically figured out that if me and him and two other dudes paid 15 quid each, then each one of us would get one of each book for relatively cheaply. So I've got 20-something odd target novels, of which I've read one. Sub story time. Me and my friends once took some of these target novels to Sheffield Comic Con. I got Sunmakers signed by Louise Jameson, who plays Leela in Doc 2. My friends, however, topped this. They asked Fraser Hines, who played Jamie in the 1960s, to sign their copies of The Invasion, and he started reading it to them, which was adorable. And I missed it because I showed up like, wow, this is really old. There used to be a free bookshop in the city I study in, which was great because it was basically for an eco-friendly charity. And it was all stuff like, hey, take these books for free or else it gets sent to landfill. It was also the location where several of my friends saw me wearing like medieval clothes and getting into a fight with someone in chainmail. Proper organisation within textbooks is very important to me. I once went off on a tirade because this Japanese textbook arranged its dictionary by the order everything appeared in the book instead of alphabetically. Book snobbery is really dumb. I had this dude I know once, like, laugh in my face when I told him I was reading one of the Halo novels. Like, um, we were talking and he was saying he was reading, I don't know what it was, I think it was, like, some novel about cr true crime or whatever. And I said I'd started reading, uh, Halo the Flood. And he legit laughed in my face. Book adaptations of movies and video games and TV stuff can be great, because they go really in-depth into stuff that's left out or not even featured. I used to lend my copies of the manga Fruits Basket out to my friends during secondary school and I would get really paranoid that they would never come back and never get to return to me. At least once a month for the last six months while I lived in Nagasaki I made a midnight outing all the way to the waterfront because there was a 24-hour book and comic shop and I just love the appeal of that. I choose to think retroactively that telling my girlfriend this place existed and then taking her down there and browsing all the books with her was one of our first dates. And lastly, number 25, I love having books suggested to me just so I can tell people that I've read them and that they will be proud of me. A friend of mine has currently lent me Caiaphas Kane, Defender of the Imperium, which is a Warhammer 40k book. And it is essentially Blackadder in space. And I am going to finish it and I am going to tell this friend I've finished it and he's going to be proud of me. On that note, I love book suggestions, so if you've got any books you think I should read, please leave them in wherever the comments go. Thanks for watching! As I said, that video was inspired by my friend Ellie, whose channel is Addicted to Daydreaming, and you should go and subscribe to her, because she's great! Thank you for watching this video I planned a year ago and got around to filming and editing today!